Hello everybody, uh, welcome to FMQ's 7th of June 2012. With us today I have Gordon Munro, newly re-elected Edinburgh Councillor for Leith, and uh, Mr Attridge, as always, um, our bad-tempered panel member. <laughs> what did you think then, Phil? Uh, I thought it was quite good. The first bit, very competitive, combative, um, Joanne. I mean, uh, with with Alec. I mean, the yes, it is independent. No, it is independent. Actually, quite good having an independence argument about nothing to do with Scotland, all about the bank. Um, I thought they both had pertinent points. I thought um, I would I would have given them a equals when they that, that they set off on that. But she did go on a bit, and they were also very well behaved behind her as well. So her presentation, I thought this week was. Absolutely excellent. Um, that's Joanne. Do you want me to say that, Ruth? No, we'll stick with Joanne just now. What do you think, Gordon? Yeah, I thought she did well, and I thought she asked some pertinent questions uh, with regards to the Bank of England, and I, I think that, you know, she didn't get answers to the questions that she put today, uh, in my view. I mean, she got partial answers to some of it, uh, and, and uh, Sam and went back to, you know, the, the Bank of England being given independence in 1997, you know, but doesn't take account of, you know, what happened with the economic crash and the state effectively nationalising the banks as well, including... I, I mean, I still think she's doing this one question thing. She asks one question, she goes back to it, back to it. She doesn't have a follow-up sting. Yeah, but I think that after last week, which I thought was appalling, because what they were all doing was... But it appeared to me anyway, as someone doesn't come from Scotland, even though I've lived here a long time, that they were mocking and laughing at their own country the whole way they did it. So I think they might have revisited this week um, and it was done a lot better. I thought it was appalling I'd last see, week. No. I, I mean, I can understand as a soundbite vehicle why they're doing it. But the fact of the matter is the question is unans unanswerable until... Yeah. Mm. It happens. More or less, yeah. Because the truth is, the the Bank of England, if it is still, well, it obviously is still influenced by the UK government, um, but they're not going to want to lose the assets that Scotland brings to the party. The only way they can keep it if we get independence is to hope that Scotland stays part of the Bank of England. Mm. But what I, what I found mm, was but that... Well, well, why should Scotland yeah. be part of the Bank of England? Why shouldn't uh, Scotland actually take over the Bank of Scotland? Though? You know, I, and, I, and have its own bank. Then, I then, have no have, problem with that. I'm surprised that that's never actually been positive well, in I that way. Well, I have no problem with that. But the reality is England has got a lot to lose. If Scotland goes its own way with its own currency, the huge asset base yeah. that's oil and gas is lost to the UK. And reflect Now, the somebody in the back room somewhere knows this. The politicians will ignore it. Alex Salmond has, I can't remember whether it was Alex Salmond or Sturgeon that brought it up, but you know, that basket of assets is part of what their credit rating is judged on. They're not gonna to want to lose it. The other side to that is that the British government are not going to want to undermine Scotland in case they walk. It's, you know, it's not to their advantage. And it's, it's, it's an argument, it's one of these ones that will come up again and again and again, but it has no real substance to it until mm -hmm. the decision has to be made. Not, mm, what did you think of Alex's ab sure. avoidance of um, the Jim Sillers remark? Uh, I think he's ducked a couple of uh, mm. sharp jives that Jim Sillers made uh, to him this year. You know, when, earlier this year when they talked about the two question uh, issue, you know, uh, Jim Summers had a column in the local newspaper where he actually said that he thought that they actually, uh, that the SNP preferred power to uh, independence and I think that was, a, I think coming from that source, I think it was a barb that actually hurt and, and it, it forced uh, people to actually think seriously, uh, uh, you, you know, both within and out with the Scottish Government about what is the question, what format should it take, should it be? two questions, and then it forced people out into uh, articulating beyond soundbite positions. And, and I, and I, I well, think that, it, that, that was valuable for that reason alone. The and there's a need for that space, because one of the things that struck me about today in First Minister's questions is, is I've actually made it there, is that there's a problem with the format, it's sterile. 
and it apes Westminster. Well, you, know, you know, and, I, and I think there's a real yeah. issue for the Scottish Parliament yeah, there. there. Is, the, the, the problem is, it's petty politics. They're looking to score points. That, I mean, the, the hope that we all, I think, had with the Scottish Parliament mm -hmm. was that it would be grown up. It's not being grown up. But both the Tory party and the Labour party have a problem. Historically, the Labour Party have to take the knocks. You know, it's your fault we're where we are. Mm -hmm. The Tory Party are doing things that are totally destroying institutions that are highly valued in Scotland, but south of the border, they're tearing them apart. So there's, it's difficult for them to ask penetrating questions because, in a lot of the cases, the SNP government doesn't have control. In a lot of the cases, they don't have control because they don't have the money. Therefore, Alex Salmond is always well, able to well, turn around and say, wait a minute. Well, I would disagree with that. I would disagree with that because, I mean, you know, they're saying that under independence, they would have control of spending and taxation. They have control at the moment on the Scottish budget. They have uh, control of taxation up to the, uh, between one to three pence of the basic rate of income tax. They've not uh, utilised yeah, this power. And, the, and, the, and the fact that Swinney did not, did yeah. not, Renew the, the, the money to Dunlan Revenue and maintain the tax base. Let's be realistic. That they're not re, that they're Let's not be realistic here. It's Nobody is going to add to the income tax bill oh, I in this day and age. It's an impossibility. It's, you, 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 it's you, an you, argument that doesn't exist. No, the, the, you, I mean, can't, you can't have a Would the Labour Party do it? No, I, 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 I think they we should actually discuss it. I've no, been, I, no I, government. I've, I've actually, no I've actually no talked about this locally and no had a disagreement with our local MSP about it. No government will do it. Ha having control, I mean, oh, I think no, you have no, to. I mean you, you that, I've got to agree with them. I mean, they, they, there's no way they have, I mean, and the word is effective control over the over the taxation. They can play a little bit here and there, but at the end of the day, it's to, not worth it. To the not extent. Worth the, the Tory government is happily ignoring the Barnett formula with the money it's putting into the London sewerage works, the subsidising of water down in the south west of the rail, country. High They're just ignoring rail, it. Yeah. That money but, is not going to be part and of the there's a, But there's an example there. It's just that, you, you know, control spending taxation. The Scottish government could take the decision that they want to, uh, you know, nationalise rail in Scotland and, and choose not to. Do you, choose know, not to. do you know how much the Treasury is going to charge them? Per tax raised. No, you I seen don't. this figure? No, I Eight seen million it. pounds. They put a penny on income tax. They're going to have to pay the treasury. Sorry, the no. um, tax gatherers. HMRC. Eight million pounds. per tax. That's not a one-off. That's per tax administration fee. Uh, so this that's what it's going to cost wow. them to do. So in effect, they're going to fine them if they do it anyway. Do we want no, to them? Mm -hmm. Do we want to score on them? So we uh, right, them yes, we've it. kind of run off here. Yes. Well, let, let's score Joanne. What do you like? What you uh, like? Well, I'll actually give her and I evens this week because I thought it was good. It was a good standoff. There, I'll give them both nine. Mm. Yeah. Nine? Yeah, I'll give them. I'll give her equal because he wouldn't answer questions. She was and not just there and that. He went mm. down in a bit of my estimation, and I thought she actually did it quite well. And a group behind, well, well behaved today. I thought she actually did well. From the point of view of creating headlines, yes, but the con the content was the content from curious. both of them was rubbish. So they're it's nine curious. each. I mean, they they did a good presentation of the of the usual. She has to get off script. She has to stop reading the script as well. Yeah, as far as performance. Ah, but they they both but they both do. They they both are. That's why I'm saying that about uh, Erla. There's a problem in the format because it's sterile because they don't mm. want to trip themselves up over something. You know, even even yeah. just a verbal slip of the tongue. Never, you know, such as the David and Danny Blanchflower incident, yeah. is seized on as a sign of vulnerability or weakness in that. Whereas it's just a, 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 a simple it, human error. I, and, if, and, and if yeah, you, yeah, if you're going to make the story around a simple human error, then, the, the, you know, politics in this country is diminished. Hmm. Well, I, I just feel that I hark back to Goldie and Salmon. Mm -hmm. Much more grown up. Oh, yeah. But I think no, 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 I, I, I give Joanne nine not so much for performance but as a punishment for Salmon's um, inability to answer questions. What do you think your scores will be? Well, I would have given Joanne eight because I think that the, the issue that she raised was substantial. I mean, she, that's the reason she pursued it with regards to you, you know the issue of the Bank of England, uh, England and a definition of independence. And I think that that's actually something that needs to be unpacked a lot more. Uh, and then I think the format of FMQs does not allow that unpacking to happen and it's maybe something that one of the parliamentary committees is actually going to have to look at quite seriously. 
and Sam and I would give the seven uh, to because again, I mean, there's no denying that he's deft on his feet as well. Again, he he was kind of really stuck in the script as well, not just for the the the, the bit between him uh, and and Joanne, but but uh, the bit between him and everybody who asked him a question today, even right down to you know uh, Marco and Richard Simpson at the end, mm. he still he had something prepared for everything mm. there. Uh, and, and that's why I was saying that FMQs is actually quite sterile, you know, as I said. Well, it, I mean, and then, I'm not, I, I couldn't give Joanne a nine. I just, she's not, yeah, I know. she's not deaf enough. Yeah, but she deserves it for just because she's just such a... Sam, I'm sorry, Simon still looked the better. Ruth mm. Davidson this week. No, I think he looked tired today, and, and I, no. think he, I think I think he, he still looks, looked, to uh, me, more professional. He just needs to answer questions a bit better and stop avoiding, you know. I, I'd like to see him go back to the short, sharp ones. Yeah. And actually, I think that's where the tiredness come in because I think it was actually, he's, he's a master at not answering the questions, but today he looked tired. Yeah, he did. Yeah. And that's why it was quite obvious that he just wasn't. But Ruth Davison, what about Ruth Davison? Um, and basically, what do you uh, think? I, I was saying, uh, I mean, this is the first time I've seen this for a long time, you know. But, uh, I was quite surprised at the difference uh, in both her composure and delivery uh, there. And even although I thought that the issue that she raised was actually a kind of spurious one, you know, because she's sort of toying with that uh, idea of the army as a symbolism of union uh, and, 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 you know, a patriotic one. And she's trying to arouse uh, national sentiment uh, in that regard. And, uh, and but it didn't work. Well, it, it, was, did, it, did, it did not it, work. It's and another, and it's she pursued another, it as well. It it's, did. it's another case. It's an open door for Simon. You know. Oh, no. we've got one naval base and one air base because no. you lot cut them all. No. But basic no, union, I, 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 unionist well. military. No, no, militaristic I, I, pish. Really, I suppose. You know? No, no. Uh, I, I think I think if anybody else was actually a bit quicker in and on this, we'd have actually focused in on the issue, as I said. You know, the comparisons are quite frequently made between Scotland and Norway in terms of yeah. the, the, the energy, uh, you know, that, that it has both from oil and gas. And How much North money sea, Norway has. You know, it's part, it's part of that Nordic arc there. And, and it does have its own separate army. It is still within NATO, still has its own special forces and that. Does Scotland have, have that? Does Scotland want that? Uh, a, a big issues, and that's not what she was asking today. She was actually narrowing it right down to does Scotland want its own special forces? I mean, if Scotland has a standing army, who does it, who's it defending itself against? England? The Isle of Man? Yeah, you know, know, Northern Ireland? I mean, that, the, the, that debate hasn't been had there. Why should we be members of NATO? But again, again, you've got a problem with that because you can't have the debate unless the military get involved, and they're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. I mean, it's been attempted and they just haven't done it. I mean, I, I, thought, I, I thought, that, that, as usual, her performance was mature, was grown up. Um, and she gets my eight this week. Well, but the content. Ruth. Yeah, she gets my eight. But the content. But she did the same thing. She asked a question, known the answer, then came back with a secondary question, you know, which is where I think Joanne's falling down. She needs to back up her initial question mm. with the other I, one. I suppose I can understand it in a way that Ruth Davidson actually got me really annoyed. It's this militaristic garbage, you know, when um, that, that somehow Scotland won't. <sighs> Eight. I can see where you're coming from, but it just goes against the grain. Well, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, jump. I'll jump over 50%. I'll give a six. Just for presentation, because she, she did actually look like... Um, a female RSM or whatever, you know, get it in there and rally no, in the no, troops, no. but no, 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 I'll no, give a six. I don't know, I think you're being a bit stereotype in there. I would <laughs> give her a six as well, though, because, again, I think yeah. the content wasn't there, but the, 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 the delivery in that. For me, the top performer in First Minister Question Time is actually Alison McInnes, who actually raised the issue of the independence oh, of the committees. Oh, that was the best. And, and that, I would give a nine for that, because um, yeah. that um, was the real issue in this here, yeah. is, is the party independence does not want independence for prison uh, visiting and monitoring. Uh, yeah. But again, Salmon could come back with a, we're in a consultation period. Yeah, but he didn't, and the whole point and was... A list and of everybody that's been consulted. And, yeah, and he did. The decisions haven't been made. Because he was tired, he didn't think about it, or he couldn't be uh, bothered about it. And the simple fact that they're actually going down that way of getting the police to police the police. You're getting people that set up these prison systems to actually inspect it and doing away with all, all that is. And that's one of the main reasons the why S the I, SNP I thought he have historically been quite good at coming back with that. 
right, you asked for this, you've got it. Now you think about the number of times they've done it. The one that stands out is, you want how many apprenticeships? Well, there's an extra 20,000. You know, that I wouldn't be surprised if they get exactly what they want and basically it takes the wind out of their sails. Because all they're really asking for is representation for the visitors. Yeah. That's and it. they're, and they're, asking, they're asking for a bit more than that as well, Nori. They're actually asking for, uh, you, you know, monitoring that will actually be uh, internationally recognised. You know, and, yeah. and if Scotland's yeah. If yeah. Scotland's an aspiring country, then it has to act, uh, act not just on the local stage, but on that international one and all. I just thought he was, he, he just let himself down. He was a bit, you know. He, he was a bit jaded today, I yeah, did. Definitely, so. Thank you, guys. Um, Gordon. Thank you. Mr. Atheridge. Yep. You are. Yeah, I can't give Ruth a second. What's wrong with you, man? Just because she's a Tory. <laughs> Thank you, folks. <laughs> See you next week.